Welcome back everyone. So far we have learned how to set up the equation of motion of a multi-degree of freedom system and we also saw that a multi-degree of freedom system is represented by different modes so the total response is actually contribution of the response of each mode. In today's class what we are going to learn is basically how to get the response of a multi-degree of freedom system in terms of response at each degrees of freedom. So we are talking about basically displacement response and we'll extend the same concept to find out other type of response quantities like shear forces and moment. And we are going to see for both type of system undamped and damped system how to actually get the expression for the displacement response okay so let us get started in the last class we discussed basically the frequency and the mode shapes okay of a multi-degree of freedom system okay so we had frequencies and mode shapes okay and we said that if multi-degree of freedom system is excited through some excitation in general the response of each degree of freedom would not be harmonic but there exist few characteristic shapes in which if they are provided displacement according to those shapes then the multi-degree of freedom system would have harmonic response at each degree of freedom and it is going to maintain its shape throughout the vibration and those characteristic shapes are actually called mode shapes and because the response is harmonic each of these modes would have their own frequencies which is basically the time taken to complete one cycle of motion okay that is the time period and we can get frequency okay using the relationship as 2 pi by time period so we discussed that and we said that the total response of a system okay would be contributed by each of these mode okay and let us see if the mode shapes are represented through this uh, uh, vector phi 1 and phi 2 and so on okay then we said that the total response would be combination of each the contribution due to each of these mode shapes okay and depending upon how much of those contribution are some modes are going to govern the response and we are going to learn about that later but uh, right now let us consider that the total response which is nothing but the response at each degree of freedom let us say and so on okay can be written as okay, response due to all mode shapes which are represented through this shape vectors okay and so on now we already know the frequency we already know the mode shape so the problem statement here is given the vector u is it possible to find out the factors that need to be multiplied to these mode shapes so that we can get the modal decomposition or modal expansion we call it okay of this displacement vector here so basically our objective here is to find out these factors here because once we derive expression to find out these factors then we can find out the total response as a linear combination of contribution due to different mode shapes okay so let us see how do we do that so this is basically called this what we have written here is modal expansion okay modal expansion of displacements okay so 
this is called modal expansion of the displacement and let us look at that how to get those factors so let us assume that the vector u is basically okay so i'm just going to write these expression that uh, we had written here in terms of summation so let us say we have n modes here n degrees of freedom okay so we'll have phi which is the mode shape here times qr okay and this qr is basically these factors that i'm talking about so our goal is to find out those qrs now we can write the same summation in terms of multiplication of modal matrix times a vector q as well okay where vector q contains all these factors as column vector okay so these are called modal coordinates okay the vector q is basically q1 q2 and so on and these are called modal coordinates okay and these are the factor that are required to find out the total response okay by combining different modes here okay so let us see how we can find out these individual qr here okay now we are going to utilize again the condition of orthogonality of the modes which basically says that if i have two different modes okay then if i take the product with respect to the mass matrix okay the product of the transpose of one mode times the mass matrix times the product of another mode that would be equal to zero okay as long as those are different mode shapes okay so what i'm going to do here i'm going to pre multiply this expression that we have written okay with phi n to the power t times the mass matrix so we get here as well on the right hand side inside the summation i will have phi n t times m okay remember this is phi r here okay not one this is phi r times q r now as we know due to modal orth orthogonality when i expand this summation okay when i execute this summation what will happen most of the term will vanish except when r is equal to n uh, sorry r is equal to n that is the only term that is going to survive okay so knowing that the expression that i will get is actually phi in t times m and now i will substitute r equal to n okay this is n and this is q n here okay so q n the model coordinate i can write it as phi n to the power t times m times u and this divided by this expression here now if you look at the denominator this is nothing but the diagonal element of the diagonalized mass matrix okay so basically what i'm saying here this is nothing but in the denominator i can write this as mn which is the nth diagonal element of the diagonalized mass matrix okay so we have found out qn now so we can do that for all the mode shapes and find out these factors multiplicative factors for all the mode shapes and and once we know that then we can combine modes using those factors okay this would be more clear after we do one example okay so let us take an example that we have been doing till now so basically i have okay the same two story representation of a building in which this here is 2k this is k this is 2m and this is m okay now we know that the mode shapes for we had derived the mode shapes and we had got that for this is degree of freedom one and this is two so this was half and one we had normalized with respect to the top story or u2 so my phi 2 here is minus one and one okay now the question is that at any time instant let us say 
okay u of t at any time instant so let us say u is given as 1 1 and what i have to find out basically the modal expansion of the displacement vector so i have to find out the expansion of this in terms of some factor times the first mode shape plus some factor times the second mode shape so basically i have to find out those factors q equal to q1 and q2 okay so let us see how do we do that all right so my q1 will be nothing but okay transpose of phi1 which so let me just first write down anyway so this would be phi1 times u here okay this would be phi1 sorry phi1 transpose here phi1 transpose times phi1 now if you look at this let us substitute those vectors here so this is half one and the mass matrix is of course 2m 0 0 m and here is the displacement vector for which we are doing the modal expansion so this is one and one here and in the denominator basically i have half one and then 2m 0 0 m times 1 1 okay so this i get as 4 by 3 similarly q2 i can find out as by substituting phi 2 okay so this will be phi 2 transpose m u phi 2 m phi 2 and the value that you you get is uh, basically you would be going to get q2 as minus 1 by 3 okay so you got this uh, factors let us see whether we get the same expression or not so basically my u1 uh, or the basically the u vector the displacement vector is 1 and 1 okay so let us use the 4 by 3 times the first mode shift which is 1 by 2 and 1 and then I have minus 1 by 3 the q2 here which is minus 1 and 1 okay so if you look at here get this as 2 by 3 plus 1 by 3 okay, plus 4 by 3 minus 1 by 3 so this we get as 1 1 okay so that expansion is actually correct and if we want to represent this in terms of uh, or like you know using some schematic in terms of the mode shape the problem is that or the statement the problem statement is initially it is given displacement which is one at each degree of freedom so you need displacement at both positions so this is one here and this is one here okay now this is equal to okay, you look at the first mode okay the mode shape is okay so this is basically 2 by 3 and 1 by 3 uh, sorry 2 by 3 and 4 by 3 so i can just write it like this okay this is 4 by 3 and this is 2 by 3 here plus sum of the second terms which is plus 1 by 3 and minus 1 by 3 so let me again draw this here okay and the second degree of freedom something like this here and then this okay so this is uh, minus 1 by 3 and this is 1 by 3 here okay. so this is what we get okay so this is nothing but 4 by 3 times phi 1 here and this is minus 1 by 3 phi 2 okay so the total response which is basically u is represented like this so you can see that through the modal expansion okay at any time instead whatever the displacement is given can be expanded in terms of contribution of the first mode and the second mode and so on if it has n modes then there would be n such uh, mode shapes 
okay and vice versa it can be also true so the idea is that if we have n number of modes they can be combined using these factors q1 q2 and so on to find out the total displacement at all degrees of freedom okay and we are going to see how we are going to get these vectors now remember this q that we have obtained here it is at any time instant okay but in general q is a function of time okay so this is for any time fixed time instead t equal to let us say t naught but in general q is basically the function of time which is the time variation okay so at any time it would be distributed or contributed by different modes so let us get into that so now what we are going to do here actually going to solve the equation for free vibration response okay So remember that our equation of motion is m times u plus k times u is equal to 0. Okay, we have said that my now we are going to write in terms of as a function of time t. Okay, so this is nothing but r equal to 1 and then the linear combination of linear sum of all the mode shapes so it would be let us say phi r times or let me just write in terms of n here okay so let us say n equal to 1 to n this is phi n times q n here now it is a function of t so we need to find out this q n of t okay and we have previously said that because each mode shapes respond as they respond in a harmonic uh, fashion so the displacement q and t which is the generalized displacement or the time variation of that mode shape can be written as an cos omega nt plus bn sin omega nt okay where this an and bn are basically constants that need to be found out using initial condition if this is our equation of motion the initial conditions are typically given at displacement vector at time t equal to 0 and the velocity vector at time equal to 0 and utilizing this we find out a and b n okay and omega n is basically the uh, frequency the circular frequency of the nth mode okay so let us see how do we get the constant a and b n because once we get that then we can find out the overall displacement vector okay if you utilize the initial condition okay we have the expression for uh, u here let us get the so let me just rewrite it okay this is nothing but summation of phi n which is the mode shape times q and t which is a n cos omega n t plus p n sin omega n t okay and we can similarly get the velocity by differentiating with respect to time the same expression here this would be omega n phi n and here it would be minus a n sin omega nt plus bn cos omega nt okay so let us substitute t equal to 0 to get these expressions here so that will give that would give us u0 as summation n equal to 1 to n phi n times a n and then summation sorry the vector velocity vector u dot 0 as summation n equal to n omega n times phi n times b n okay so this is the expression to 
that we would utilize to find out the constants a n and b n now if you look at a n and b n and let us say uh, my q t is written as this expression here a n cos omega n t. So, this is the expression that the general expression, right? Solution that we had assumed sin omega n t. Now, if we say that, let us assume a n equal to q, oh sorry, not q t, q dot 0, q 0, and b n omega n equal to q dot 0. Okay, then I can write this expression as q0 cos omega nt plus q dot 0 divided by omega n sin omega nt. Remember, these are also constants here, but why I am writing it like this so that my qt is similar to the expression that we had obtained for single degree of freedom system in terms of u0 and u0 but now we obtain here in terms of the modal coordinate okay so i'm just making this substitution here so that it is we can correlate it to single degree of freedom system so if that is there then this expression can be written as n equal to this phi n times q0 and this expression as phi n times omega n q dot sorry no omega n here just q dot zero okay now we can look at these two expressions and q zero and q dot zero are nothing but you know the expressions similar to what we had derived here Okay, so we can utilize the same expression to find out the value of q0 and q dot 0. Okay, so basically, so then remember this is qn0 for nth mode. Okay, so just be careful with that. All things we are doing for the nth mode. This is again qn here, qn, qn here. Okay, so my qn of 0 becomes phi n t times mass and this vector is basically u0 now and again in the denominator i have mn of and q dot 0 is phi n of t plus u dot 0 and then mn is here So utilizing these two expressions, we can get q n zero and q dot n zero. And once we have that, then the expression for q n t is known. Okay. Sine omega n t. And once q n t is known, then we can do that for each and every mode and we can find out the total response using this summation that we had derived okay so this is basically n equal to 1 to n phi n times q n t okay so basically we saw that how to find out the response the free vibration response of an undamped system okay and uh, basically what we do we find out the time variation of the generalized coordinate for each mode okay we find out the constants uh, known constant using the initial conditions and finally we combine all those modes using the modal coordinate at any time t okay and we can find out the response total response is a function of linear combination of all those mode shapes okay so we can do an example of this and then see okay demonstrate the free vibration response so let us again take the same example okay so this is here 2k and k here this is 2m 
and m here okay again phi 1 and phi 2 have been given to it now what is given as initial conditions have been given to us so u0 is basically half and 1 remember this is u1 here and this is the second degree of freedom u2 and the initial velocity is also given as 0 0 okay so let us see what do we get as the overall response okay the ut value to do that first i need to find out these factors q1 of t and then q2 of t okay let us see how do we get that so basically q1 of t would be nothing but phi1 t mass times u0 divided by m1 which let me write it as phi1 t mass phi1 here okay and once we substitute the all the uh, values here so this phi t would be basically half 1 then i have the mass matrix 2m 0 0 m and then u0 which is basically half 1 okay and i again have half 1 2m 0 0 m and half 1 okay so we can get this q1 t as this uh, this value as okay sorry this is q10 here not t as the numerator and denominator is same we get this as one similarly q20 we can get as doing the same thing okay just replace uh, phi1 by phi2 okay and this would you will see that after you substitute this parameter this comes out to be zero in addition to that q1 dot zero and q2 dot zero would be equal to zero because by u dot the initial velocity at degrees of freedom equal to zero this is equal to zero so we can go ahead and in our expression we can substitute q1 of t would be basically equal to phi1 times okay or uh, let me just first write down q1 at t is equal to q0 cos omega 1t plus q dot of 0 divided by omega n sin omega 1t okay this is omega 1 let us see okay this is equal to 0 q0 is 1 so this i am left with cos omega n t okay q2 of t would be equal to 0 because my q2 of 0 is equal to 0 and q2 dot 0 equal to 0 okay so these two q1 of t and q2 of t we have obtained as these expressions so remember my u t would be nothing but summation n equal to 1 to 2 here phi n times q n t which is basically phi 1 times q1 of t phi 2 times q2 of t which basically second term is equal to 0 so this is i get this i get as half and 1 and times cos omega 1 t okay so this is the response that i get for each degree of freedom or in combine the uts 1 by 2 and 1 times cos omega 1 t okay so this was the first part let us again find out the response for another case in which okay so i'm considering another case and in this case the initial displacement has been given as minus 1 by 2 and 2 okay and 
two two dot is actually equal to zero zero. Okay, so we can again follow the same procedure. Okay, and we can write down the displacement as one by two and one. Or let me before writing that. Remember, this is my first degree of freedom. This is the second degree of freedom. Okay, I can write this as phi one times q one t. And phi two times of q two of t, so this we get as half times one times cos omega one t plus minus one and one the second mode shape times cos omega two. Okay, so this is the response for the second case. Now the reason that we did like in you know, the two cases. I wanted to show you something. You have a you have a look at the response here and the response here. What can you tell me about these responses? If you look at it and if you the response for the first one, this is actually a harmonic motion at each degree of freedom, right? Because it is a cos omega t type, okay, as a cos function. However, in the second one, I have some function times or uh, some vector times cos omega one t plus another vector times cos omega two t. So this is not a harmonic variation because I have two frequency and it cannot be written as some constant times some cos or sine variation. Okay, had it been the same angle omega one and omega two equal to omega, then I would I could have done that. Okay, but not in this case. So in the first case, the response is. Harmonic, whereas in the second case the response is non-harmonic. Okay, one more thing to notice here. In the first case, I can see only the contribution due to the first mode. There is no contribution of the second mode. There is no omega two t term here. Okay. However, here you can see that there is contribution of both modes. Okay. So only the contribution of first mode in the first case, while in the second case there is contribution of both mode, and that can be explained directly if you look at the initial displacement. Okay, for the first case, remember the initial displacement was half and one, which is also the first mode shape of the given structure, and by definition, as we have previously discussed, if you assign Initial displacement to the structure, which is according to the one of the characteristic shape, then it is going to respond harmonically while maintaining its shape, and it is going to vibrate in a particular mode of vibration. So there would be no contribution of any other mode. So that's why we don't see any contribution of other modes because it is being vibrated with initial displacement, which is. One of its mode shapes. Compare that to second one. The initial displacement here is not one of its mode shapes. So in general, when we provide initial displacement, we would have contribution of both modes, and the response would not be harmonic at each degree of freedom. Okay, and we have just seen example of that. Okay, whatever we had discussed. Okay, all right. So I hope this example is clear. Now. Let us get into damped free vibration. Okay, so we have discussed undamped free vibration. Now let us discuss damped free vibration. Now for the damped free vibration, we will now have an additional damping term here with the damping matrix C here. This is equal to zero. Okay. Now, in this case, if you look at it here, I have this damping matrix. Okay. Now, the reason I was able to solve the undamped free vibration because my mass matrix and 
my damping matrix could be diagonalized okay the solution for damp free vibration would depend on the fact that whether my c matrix can be diagonalized or not because if i am able to diagonalize my c matrix or the damping matrix then i can uncouple all the equation of motion for all the different modes so i would have n uncoupled differential equations okay and then i could solve those and combine the responses using the modal expansion vectors okay so whether i can solve this analytically or not it would depend on c okay so basically c plays a big role now if c is a classical damping matrix okay so if c is a classical damping matrix if okay so let me write it here c is classical damping matrix if it can be diagonalized And how do we diagonalize this? Okay, how do we diagonalize any matrix? We multiply with the modal matrix. Okay, and then see whether it can be diagonalized or so. Let us say it becomes C two C n as C n. This is zero and zero. Okay, and if it can be diagonalized, we call it a classical damping matrix. there are non classical damping matrix as well and there are some methods of solution for those as well but that is not within the scope of this course okay so let us consider classical damping matrix where c can be diagonalized and then see if we can get solution to this damped free vibration so what we are going to do here i am going to write my u as the modal matrix times the modal coordinate vector q here Okay, of course it's Q T. I'm dropping the T term here. Okay, so I'm, first I'm going to substitute this, and then I'm also going to pre-multiply with the modal matrix transpose. Okay, so this is the acceleration of the modal coordinate here again. Phi T times C. Times u dot, which I can write it as q dot here, and then phi t times k times phi okay, times q. Now, as we know, this is a diagonal mass matrix, this is a diagonal damping matrix, and this is a diagonal stiffness matrix. So this can be written as Mass times the Q vector. Okay, the diagonal mass matrix times the modal acceleration vector, and then this has diagonal damping matrix times velocity vector here, and then the diagonal stiffness matrix times the Q vector here. Okay, and because remember all these expressions are in terms of m1, m2, and so on. Let us say m n here, like this, and then q1, q2, and so on. Similarly, c1, c n, okay, q1, q2. Plus k1, k2, okay. All these are uncoupled and uncoupled differential equation, okay. And for the nth mode, okay, for the nth mode, I can write it as m n q n plus c n q n dot. The scale q n is equal to zero, which is of the form of the free vibration response of a single degree of freedom system. So I have basically decomposed my multiple degree of freedom system through the modal decomposition into 
n single degree of freedom system and then i'm going to find out the response for each system each uh, system which would be basically response for each mode in terms of the modal coordinate q and t and once i have the q and t we know that we can combine all the modes using the multiplication of the mode shape times the q and t using this expression here okay now like what we did for free vibration response of a damped undamped system we can do the same thing for the damped system as well okay and q and t can be similarly obtained okay now to do that let me first do this write down the same equation that we have okay by dividing throughout by mn and writing it in this form okay q n plus 2 zeta n omega n okay times q n and omega n square times q n equal to 0 okay. now if you look at here we have damping for the nth mode so now for a multi-degree of freedom system the way the damping ratio is defined there is a separate damping ratio for each of the mode okay and that damping ratio is nothing but cn divided by c critical which is 2 mn omega n okay and my q and t can be written as n is zeta omega n times t here then q n 0 now i would have remember now there is a damping in each of the modes so i have to consider the damped frequency so this is the omega n dt okay plus n dot 0 zeta n omega n times omega n d times sine omega n okay this is similar to the expressions that expression that we had obtained for the damped response of a single degree of freedom system only now we are considering everything for a particular mode so this is the response for the nth mode okay and we have defined the damped frequency for the nth mode as omega n times 1 minus zeta n square okay and the total response i can write using the expression that i had here as ut equal to summation n to n phi n q n t where q n t is basically this expression here okay so this is how we get the response the damped response free of uh, of a free response of a damped system okay now if we notice in this case typically we do not get the damping matrix so i've told you that you know you can get the damping matrix and see if it can be diagonalized or not okay but in practice there is no way we could get the damping matrix by just considering damper element in a structure okay so what we typically do for practical analysis we assume or we determine experimentally the damping ratio for each mode because uh, remember now the damping is defined for each of these modes okay and there are some experimental methods to do that okay or we can assume some values based on the data that we have observed in the past from the testing or the response of other type of structures similar structures 